So the map is going to be Belshir for Siege. I remember seeing a very good game between uh, the Muslim and Polt on, uh, on their respective streams uh, two days ago, which actually went really well. And I ended up in you know all the minerals on the map just completely depleting, uh, and Polt simply winning because he had a slightly bigger army and the Muslim had too many SCVs. So without further ado, in the bottom right from Team Mouse Control, we have the Green Terran Optimus. Yep, and in the top side, we have, take it away. Just to once again our purple, uh, uh, pink Terran this time, of course. There you go. Yep, the reason I'm so silent right now is because I'm changing the name Metals to your name. <laughs> and uh, That's okay. They will follow you instead of him, which is of course better. <laughs> no, it's better not. followers. I know, right? You need all the followers. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, so... Okay, uh, I was a bit confused here. It seems Optimus is uh, uh, still a bit shaking from that last game because his supply depot is significantly later than uh, his opponents, and he won't be able to throw down, uh, you know, the barracks quite as soon. Uh, maybe he won't care for that, and we'll just go command to the first. Uh, but you know, if, if you look at the last game, I don't think that's very plausible. So. Yeah, perhaps Reaper openings again this game. We see one gas going down for one and w another for the other. So, uh, yeah, I really think we're going to see that somewhat aggressive uh, Reaper opening once in the game as we've seen the current TVT meta game a lot. Yep, uh, I think so as well. Reapers are so... Um, that they're like the standard right now. If you yeah. play a TVT and you don't see Reapers, you're going to be a little bit confused because y you just expect it from the get-go. You do see st still see some people going for like a... A gasless expansion, but you take so much damage from the Reapers. I don't know if it's worth it, actually. Uh, it, it, no, you can do it. You can pull it off, but you have to play pretty much defensively. Um, usually, you'll see uh, Terrans going for 15 gas, and then a reactor on their barracks, and just pump out Marines all the time, and just hold the high ground while they while they get their extra expansion up. Um, so yeah, Optimus opting to wall off after he has been uh, thoroughly scouted. So uh, Yosukon kind of knows what to expect from him, and the same goes for. Uh, Optimus, who scouted his opponent, is now harassing the SCV building the depot wall. Yep, it's going to be a depot wall. Uh, you don't see that that often. Uh, now, in the, the position where Optimus is, I actually always make the barracks, because you can make the add-on as well. And when you're at the top position and you make a barracks on the on the wall off, you can't make the add-on, so that's like a decision you have to make. Yeah, that's always a bit annoying. Uh, both players so far are going for pretty much identical builds, except that Optimus, like I mentioned, uh, uh, his, you know, his depot a bit. Uh, of course, as I say, that the first branch in the game happened. Oh no, <laughs> they're still both both throwing down a factory. Yep, and Optimus taking the green color so he can hide in the bushes next to the cell Naga towers. Amazing, of course. Uh, we see the Reaper from uh, Yastercrown took some damage, but no strange stuff going on this game. No two barracks, there's no hidden barracks. Both guys going for factory. No uh, huge eco builds either, and uh, reactor coming down as well. For um, for our pink player, so yeah, that's gonna be some uh, Hellions uh, to start with, I think. Yeah, I mean, it looks like uh, Josh Kron is gonna be slightly more defensive uh, and opt to expand uh, on the high ground. I mean, building his command center there. Uh, whereas if we look at um, uh, Optimus's build, you know, he's okay. <laughs> as I say, he throws down his, his command center of his own. I do like uh, throwing in the this, you know the single win of mine there. He can really catch. A clump of reapers off guard if they hop off a cliff or something like that. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, a widow mine is so good. I like it especially against the banshee opening because if a banshee flies into the widow mine, you you just feel like you've already won the game. Who makes banshees these days, man? Who makes banshees these days? Uh, I've seen it on occasion. Um, okay. I mean, everybody wants to use the new units, of course, especially on uh, on hot. You yeah. bought the game, you want to use the widow mines, you want to use uh, everything, but you can also use the old builds, of course. And if it happens, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm really going down here for Yosukom, indicating that he does want to go for that Hellbat drop. Uh, I kind of like it. I mean, uh, this used to be a bit of an all-in build. Throwing in the throwing in the command center there, of course, slightly delays the drop, but that does mean you can transition into a, a late game, uh, you know, further into the game. We have a, a small move out here. Oh, Hellion getting taken out by the Widow Mine at the bottom. Yeah, uh, both uh, Widow Mines getting one kill and both of them killing uh, Hellion. That's already being very cost efficient with those, uh, with those Widow Mines actually, because if you take down a Hellion it's almost worth it already. And it prevents some scouting from uh, from Yastacron. If you check what he's, what he's seen, 
he hasn't seen that much going on and he doesn't know if he has an expansion either because of those Widowmind. Yeah, and uh, he did get a good scan off an Optimus who was going to go for uh, you know two barracks with reactor, so he's going to go into bio plays. We can uh, obviously see, whereas uh, Yostakone is now gearing up to go for that, uh, you know, Hellbat drop. Yep, he's uh, he's going to go for that, and we see some uh, creative positioning on the widow mines from Optimus. If you check it at his natural expansion, you will see them being laid down uh, close to the geysers. That is obviously against some drops. I, I like yeah. that a lot. Look at his position, he's just so defensive. He's got, mar he's got marines like at the edge of his main, uh, where of course manifacts are somewhat expected to drop uh, you know, any units in. And if they decide to go for the natural, there's two widow mines here to catch that. So I know widow mines don't one shot uh, manifacts, but uh, it does make him rather unhappy. Yeah, it, it makes it makes them unhappy for one, but two, it makes them so weak that one marine can easily take down the medevac. And uh, it's not as likely that you go from the natural base to the expansion. We do see a uh, drop moving in. Boost is underway and these Hellbats are going to be dropped into the main base. Same build from Yostercone as last game. It looks like these guys racking up the kills right now. Already five and two, that's seven workers killed immediately. Oh, is he going to, yeah, he's just going to drop right on top of the tank, which is going to be like, what, what is this? How can I? And uh, oh, he's actually going to lose his tank to these Hellbats. Couldn't yeah, repair it in time. That's actually a huge loss because that tank is more expensive than the two Hellbats. Oh, I like the response here by Optimus uh, by just counterattacking. However, the Hellbat count is uh, quite higher at the natural of uh, Yostakone at this stage in the game. So with good micro, we can take him out, but they do so much damage to Marines. Yep, they do. And uh, there's going to go ahead and be a drop in the main base. He's going to load up uh, qu on quite a creative position, actually, uh, straight here. The Hellbats are moving in, but the Hellbats ever so slow. He is doing some damage, not taking uh, anything out yet. Though. Nice pick up there, preventing all of his Marines from being completely roasted. Uh, and of course, he does spot the double factory, so he knows that uh, Yostakone is going to go once again for this mech composition. Yep, and uh, the medevac with the two Hellbats is still in the right bottom corner as well. He might use that later on. We see a third base being laid down on the minimap by Optimus uh, right here. But yeah, he's going for a, a heavy bio composition again, getting combat shields, adding the extra engineering bay, making the expansion. And it's going to be up against mech again. It's going to be a very similar game to last game uh, unit-wise. Yeah, of, of course the map is going to make all the difference here. Uh, we see once again a greedy move here by Optimus by going for that early third. Um, and he might sneak an expansion somewhere else. However, it's just not as big of a map, hence maneuvering. Uh, you know, through these choke points for a bio Terran player is going to be rather, uh, you know, dangerous. There might be widow mines somewhere. Siege tanks, of course, with their huge range uh, can shell your uh, units without even being seen. And you know, I think the this push from Yostakone, which is going to be coming in the next five minutes, maybe later, it's just going to be really hard to hold off for Optimus. Yep. On the other uh, end, though, on Belshir Vestige. Making a push with mech isn't easy because you have to push across with all of these slow units and that's an incredibly uh, big map actually. Now the last Hellbat of the Hellbat drop is going to go ahead and be landed into the main base. Going to find three Marines. We'll take out one, two and number three. I'm going to try and get some, uh, well not SVs but depots apparently. I I'm sure he wants to go for the SVs. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, the brilliant thing of the Hellbat drop is that the two units just synergize so incredibly well. Um, Hellbats, of course, biologically uh, healable and repairable. Uh, having a medevac in there just increases their longevity by so much. Uh, and of course, the speed boost of the medevacs makes, makes these naturally slow units a lot more mobile. Yep, uh, I mean, you could even uh, repair them while healing them, I think. Yeah, you can. Which would make them incredibly uh, beefy tanks. Yeah, it makes them really tough to kill. And you know, 130 HP compared to a Marine's uh, 55 with combat shields. It's, uh, you know, you need to micro really well against them to take them out. Yep, and we have a large uh, amount of Hellions roaming across the middle of the map. And it looks like some uh, Marines, and they're really good against Marines. You see that Rose there? Yeah. I don't want that happen. Yeah, it it just depends though on how you engage. I mean, he doesn't have plus two. I mean, he doesn't have plus two or, or uh, blue from Hellions, but he does, you know, simply take out this Marine Force with a good concave and Optimus is forced to pick up uh, and drop right back at the natural again. Uh, I mean, the, at the notch, watchtower again. And these Hellions have, uh, you know, pretty damn sure established map control. 
Yep, uh, there are two really cutely placed widow mines outside of yeah. the base of uh, Yastakron, though. They are a little bit acting like they are burrowed bane links. Of course, they're not, but still. Um, widow mines on sneaky positions are really good against the Terran because uh, they will only be revealed by the scan. In most locations, you don't see the Raven uh, that much, actually. I mm -hmm. think a Raven is really good in TVT right now because of the widow mines. When you fly into, when you walk into these widow mines once, you, you will make a Raven, though. Oh, you're just stealing the thoughts from my mind because I was going to talk about ravens and how good they are these days with the, you know, added uh, with the energy cost reduction for seeker missiles, which just makes such a fireable unit. And now the widow mines do go off, taking out quite a few hellions and damaging uh, even more. Um, and yeah, I think one single raven can actually add a lot to the mech composition because if you throw down important defense zones, that's a lot of prevented damage from marauders. Yep, uh, it is indeed, and and two hunter seeker missiles. That's amazing as well. Oh. We do see once again that um, Optimus wants to get some map control. He did deny the third base for a little bit, and he is opting uh, to assault Ooh. that, I feel like. This is a dangerous position from Jost he, he isn't, you know, he is sheeted up, but there's no air, con he doesn't have ground control. And uh, I thought Optimus was just going to pick up and drop on top of these uh, siege tanks, but he is not. Uh, instead, just going to hang around a bit and try to establish air dominance with these Vikings. Yep, uh, I, I thought the same thing you did, because these siege tanks are pretty clumped up and when you start dropping units on top of them, it can be really good. Now Optimus doing the same thing he did last game and that's adding some siege tanks later on. They will be uh, very good in that army composition. He's also gonna plant a drop at the third base. They're coming out right now. It are all Marauders. Yeah. They are taking a lot of damage from these siege tanks though and the planetary finishes. Oh, and they're gonna get taken on by these Vikings most likely, even though they do uh, speed boost away. Uh, no, Vikings not going to give chase. Uh, yeah, interesting move here from uh, Optimus that he doesn't decide to pressure the front while he does that, because it, as you can see, it pulled the entire army of Yostakon towards that planetary, uh, meaning that he could have, you know, if he wanted to, perhaps stimmed up and ran into the natural and you know, done a whole lot of damage, but, uh, you know, he hasn't really opted to. Nope, and there are some sensor towers on the on the field as well from Yastakron that will give a good indication of when units are moving, where they are moving, and when drops are coming in. I think that's a really good decision against the, the play that Optimus has done with the map control, but there is going to be a siege up at the low ground of the main base, and some marines being dropped in, and that viking count is quite high for Optimus. We check the unit step right now, we see it's seven vikings against three, so Optimus will have the domination in disguise. These hellions taking down these marines, but what do you think about this position? Oh, I l really like this move. I mean, the, the, the actual damage he's going to do is quite minimal. But, you know, putting pressure on your opponent like that is always a good move. And uh, he's actually sort of camping his opponent's starboard, taking out the Vikings, uh, you know, as they get created. Uh, having the air control as a bio-playing Terran versus a mech-playing Terran will actually win you the game. And he didn't quite do it in the last game because of a couple of mistakes he made. Um, but it is so strong and Optimus at this point Having been able to play so freely, uh, you know, he's adding on a fourth base. He's almost, you know, almost completely maxed out. Uh, he has air control. He has map control. He's just in a much better position actually than he was in, was in the previous game. Yep, fourth base uh, already established for Optimus, and he's got his opponent pinned down in his main base. I don't think there's a better position than that to be in because everything that comes out of these factories has to take a little bit of a detour because there's tanks shelling it down on them. He is gonna move uh, away with these tanks though. Yeah, he knows that the amount of damage he could have potentially done there is, uh, you know, kind of run out. Uh, at this point, he is maxed. Uh, he's getting good upgrades. Finally, 2-2, two, two, uh, getting close to finish, even though it's uh, a bit late. You know, usually you'll see that finish around 16-minute mark. Uh, and yeah, Yostakona as well starting to max out. We have another drop, which was actually going on at the top right. Um, didn't do too much damage, though. Nope, I see one of those missile turrets got a kill. And dropping in a planetary is usually not that much fun for the guys being dropped. And that was the uh, occasion there. We do see the army from Optimus is moving on the right hand side of the map. And the army from Yastakron is already moving that way as well. We might see a huge clash and it's always going to come down to who's Oh, enough. this is not going to be a good fight for Optimus. He does engage in the air fight though. Uh, Raven doesn't have enough energy quite yet to throw down a point defense zone. Uh, which would make a whole lot of difference because it you know, pretty much negates the floor. And actually, he's just going to stim past and head straight into the third. Yep, he's going to go for it. And uh, this could either be a really good or a really bad decision. But this planetary is taking a lot of damage really fast. Oh, uh, it's going down. But the planetary explodes. 
Yeah, and these SCVs are now literally being body hocked by this bio force, which has been stimmed almost uh, to death. Uh, the army of just the clone there was lacking behind because there was uh, a couple of tanks there which they got cut up on. And uh, well, this move was by Optimus was really good. You know, he recognized that his opponent was out of position, stimmed past, did as much damage as he could, and now Yostikon's army is wet, far away from his base, um, just getting ready to be, be picked off. Yep, and the way I see this game right now is if Yostikon does not manage to do an incredible amount of damage, he will be knocked out of this game and it will be a 1 1 tie up. On the other side, we do see a lot of units from Optimus that have been uh, badly damaged by the overstim. Plus, they're in a really bad position right now. There are some siege tanks, or actually one siege tank on the high ground. He's gonna do a lot of damage to these units, actually. He's not seeing that, I think. He will take down the natural, and he will siege up and throw down the scan into the main base. Or actually Ooh, there come the Marauders and Marines being dropped onto the siege tanks. Only one Tori did shoot at the medevac, but that's, of course, not enough. Uh, and yeah, Optimus here doing his best to hold the high ground. He's content with you know losing his natural, because he has plenty of other orbital commands which he can move elsewhere. Uh, and yeah, once he does clear up these tanks, he's going to be in a much better position. Yep, and that Thor might uh, go down. That means there's no more anti-air. More units being dropped on top of the siege tanks. Doing so much damage. He still has a few siege tanks left. Gonna try and stim in. Not the best decision right there, though. And these units from the back are reinforcing. But that's the hit squad that already took a lot of damage. Will be able to clean this up, though. Yeah, he does clean it up. Uh, not in a very clean way, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, he could have done a better job with continuously dropping while moving in. Uh, two starports have been added on for Optimus, which I think is the correct decision. And he has, as we can see, uh, now moved up into Banshee production. Um, for once, I would like him to see, um, like to see him make battle cruisers because battle cruisers are actually very good against Taurus. Taurus almost don't touch them; do very little damage because of their the way they shoot. Uh, unless, of course, you switch their fire modes, which they do. Uh, you know, do good damage against battle cruisers. Yep, and uh, it looks like Optimus is just in a demanding position right now, with the way he uh, he took out that base. But he is taking a little bit of damage by three Hellions in the yeah. in the third base, though. Yeah, we do have the you know finally some harass here coming out from uh, from Yostikon. I really feel he he could have done a better job if he'd done that earlier uh, in the game because Optimus was being really greedy. Um, you know, in the mid stage where he was just. Uh, recognizing his opponent with mech and felt he had the time to do whatever he wants. Um, and yeah, we have a fusion core on the way for Optimus, which I really like. I would also l like to see him make more SCVs, but I can't have it all. You can't have it all. Um, the funny thing though, these two Widow Mines on the position under the ramp <laughs> at Just Crone's base have completely prevented him from moving ever down that ramp. We do see an uh, army of air units engaging right here. The missile tower and the sense tower. Oh, here we go. This is what I was talking about. There are currently, there's currently only one Viking left for the cone. And, uh, you know, he is going to focus down the sense tower first. And now these siege tanks, they're forfeit. It's GG. 